Welcome to the Fast Leader Podcast, where we explore convenient yet effective shortcuts that will help you get ahead and move forward faster by becoming a better leader. And now, here's your host, customer and employee engagement expert and certified emotional intelligence practitioner, Jim Rimbach. Thanks, Kimberly. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, I am thrilled to introduce my guest today to you. Stan Phelps is an author, speaker, and experienced architect. Stan has really worked with some tiny brands that you may have heard of, like KFC, NASCAR, Starbucks, M&Ms, PGA, and you know what? He has held leadership positions at many of these organizations, either through project work or working for them as an employee. But over the past five years, his focus has actually shifted and he has become a best-selling author and his writing is actually syndicated on some top sites such as Forbes, Customer Think, Business to Community, and he also contributes at MedgeBlend and Switch and Shift. He's spoken in over 100 events across the globe in some countries that uh, we all probably wish we have gone to, uh, like Sweden, Australia, the Netherlands, Russia, and France. I think his most important job probably is being a dad to his two boys, Thomas and James, and a husband to his wife, Jennifer. Stan, welcome. Are you ready to help us get over the hump? <laughs> I'm, I'm more than ready, Jim. That's I fantastic. Stay, I stay ready to keep from having to get ready. <laughs> That's a great point. Another one of those little tips that I think all of us can learn from. Now, Stan, I've given our listeners a brief introduction. However, would you please tell us what your current passion is so that we can get to know you better? Jim, my my passion is really about shifting how companies market their products and their services. And my career, which spans almost 20 years in marketing, was really all about in the beginning focusing on the prospect and trying to grab their attention. And I think that's a misnomer when it comes to today because today's marketing is truly about the experience. And that's really what your brand is at the end of the day. So my goal is to try to get companies thinking more about the customers they already have rather than the prospects that they don't have. I think that's actually become a common passion for a lot of people today. And while they want to, uh, uh, essentially live that dream, they find out that it's a really, really difficult path. And I think you're going to help us get over that hump in some of these areas. First of all, on the show, we like to start with a piece of inspiration. We like to really look on leadership quotes in order to help us. So for, for you, what would you say is one of your most favorite leadership quotes? One of my, my favorites by far, Jim, and it comes right here from my backyard. I live in Cary, North Carolina, and there's a company that's based here in Cary called the SAS Institute. And it was started 30 plus years ago by Dr. James Goodnight. And SAS has been listed as the best place to work in the world. It's renowned in terms of its retention rates, the things that they do for employees. And this little thing that I think is, is the key to his mantra, and this, this is his quote, is the idea of treating employees like they make a difference, and they will. And it, whether it's you know treating people employees, team members, like they matter. And if you do that, you know what? They will. That's it's a, great a simple point. one, but I, it's to me one that I, I always try to remember when I think about leadership. You know, and I'm glad you even mentioned the SAS Institute because we actually have two folks that are going to be coming up in episodes here shortly. I can't uh, give you some names yet because we still haven't locked them in, but uh, you know, hopefully they'll be able to provide some inside scoop and tips and ideas on ways we can get over the hump. Uh, from from them internally. So how do you actually apply the meaning of that quote, Stan, in your life? Well, everything I write and I speak about, Jim, is is about the idea of doing the little extra. And it's based on a concept that comes from New Orleans called Lanyap. And it's, and it's doing that little something extra that's unexpected. And if you look at SAS and how they, how they handle their employees, they truly try to go above and beyond to do a lot of those little things that communicate that they care. And that's what I try to do in my life and what I write, my, spe my speaking, and how I try to manage on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, and one of your books was actually highlighting the concept of Lanyap, wasn't it? 
correct, correct. Actually, the trilogy of my books all touch that, the purple goldfish, the green goldfish, and the golden goldfish. Yeah, and hopefully we'll have a special offer from Stan coming up for us listeners, and we'll ask him about that in a second and see if it includes something from the fish projects. All right, Stan, no doubt that uh, the path to where you are today has not been a simple one. Um, We all call it a journey, and sometimes journeys are met with follicle loss, and I think you and I both share that. Uh, (laughs) Good thing you guys can't see pictures of our bald, shiny heads. But uh, um, when you start thinking about challenges, getting over that hump, you know, oftentimes we don't have people to help us do that. You know, we have to find out on our own, and sometimes we spend a lifetime not figuring that out. But those are important stories that we like to share here at Fast Leader Show because it doesn't matter you know, who you are, what you do, at a minimum, you lead yourself. So from that perspective, we are all leaders. It doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur, if you're working in an organization, or if you're a domestic goddess, as they say. We all have to lead. We are dealing with other people. We're dealing with vendors. We're dealing with ourselves. So therefore, from that definition, we all have to lead. And the better we are at that, the more of a fulfilling life and career that we're going to have. And so we like to share those things. Stan, please tell us a story when you had a hump to get over in your leadership journey, starting with the situation that actually created the challenge. I I think my greatest hump occurred, Jim, about three years ago. And I had spent about two and a half years writing my my first book. And I got to the point where, where I really believed that marketing needed to change and that what I was currently doing was was flat out you know, the opposite of what I was professing. And so I I really got to this point where I needed to make that leap and really try to stand on my own two feet. And that's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing to leave a day job and to venture out to do something entrepreneurial on your own. And what I ended up doing was, you know, essentially moving my family from where we lived up in the Northeast, relocating, but essentially starting my own business. And the little thing that I did that, that was kind of a halfway was I ended up working part-time for my old agency and then part-time starting my own business. And I think the hump that I needed to get over was you can't be half pregnant in this world. You have to be fully committed if you want to succeed. And so that was a huge lesson to me as I made that transition. Hey, is that politically correct or gender correct? <laughs> you, 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 you can't be both things. You can't serve two masters. And so it really got to a point where I needed to put a stake in the ground and I was able to make that transition a little over two years ago and haven't looked back. You know, you and I have had some personal discussions about this particular issue and, and I shared the half pregnant thing to somebody and that's what I got back. Hey, is that gender correct? But <laughs> You really get the point when you hear that, right? So right. I mean, you just know what it means. I mean, you can't have, you know, two feet in, in different oceans. I mean, it just doesn't work. Right. Um, and I think, you know, for many of us, that's just a, a really hard thing to face. So at what point, Stan, did you ultimately have that epiphany? Well, you know, you have to be very careful on doing what is safe. And I think for a while, for the first few months, I felt like, I had a nice little bit of cushion with doing the the three days a week with my old former employer. And I just realized that I was doing myself a disservice and I was doing them a disservice by having one foot in both places. And it just got to me, it became crystal clear. I needed to put that date in the sand and I needed to define closure with my former employer and jump into doing what I wanted to do even though there really was no net there, I just needed to jump. And that was the greatest thing I did. Got it. So as you're talking about that, for me, it's like you needed to stop languishing. Correct. You know, safe is not always uh, the best thing for you in terms of moving forward. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's there's several things that we can actually learn from that story. And thanks for for sharing it. And and I think, um, you know, making a faster decision you know, oftentimes, you know, will will cause us to actually make the moves that we know we need to make. Um, and I'm, I, knowing you, Stan, I know that the risk associated with that move was not one that was a high risk. I mean, you had a lot of knowledge and wisdom, and I'm sure support backing you up and making that move. And 
And I think, you know, making, you know, the ultimate decision really was already made by the time you had your own epiphany. You just had to realize is what it sounds like. Correct. Yeah. Have the courage to leave the safety behind and go in with both feet. And, and I'll say this, there was a lot of, and I love this term, ooching along the way. So these small steps of things that I did to test the waters, to make sure that I knew that there was gonna be a, there was gonna be a roughly safe landing when I made that jump. So it's important to have those little things that you do that validate where you wanna go. I'm not, I'm not a spouse anyone that they jump with without having a good idea of where they're going to land. I think I just uh, shot an info video not too long ago where I talked about the difference between having a, uh, a, a journey and not having a journey, you know, and, and what is not having a journey? It's called wandering because you really don't have a target. Right. You have to have some type of target for it to really be a journey. Otherwise, you'll just be wandering all over the place and not knowing where to go. And then sometimes when you get to, your, to, to a particular destination, you have no clue on how you got there. And for me, that typically happens with internet searching. Like, how did I get here? Thanks so much for sharing that, Stan. I think there's, again, so many pieces of information that we can get, get out of there. But I want to move us on to the fun part of our show. Hump Day Hoedown. Okay, Stan, the Hump Day Hoedown is the part of the show where... You give us good insights fast. So I am going to ask you several questions, and your job is to give robust yet rapid responses that are going to help us move onward and upward faster. Stan, are you ready to hoe down? Let's hoe down. Come on. All right. So what do you think is holding you back even today from being yet a better leader? I I think every day... I have to challenge myself on how I can be a better servant leader to the people that I interact with. So a lot of the work that I do is entrepreneurial as an independent kind of entrepreneur, but I also work with a couple volunteer organizations. And so every day it's how can I support the people that I work with and that report to me in those organizations to help them perform better. Because ultimately that's going to help me and the team at the end of the day. Perfect. What's the best leadership advice you have ever received? I think it's simply this. Recognize, recognize, recognize. Mm. Recognition to me as a leader is something that you cannot do too often um, or too soon. Recognition is a driver of performance. It shouldn't be something that just happens after the fact. Great. What is one of your secrets that you believe contributes to your success? I think I, I really understand that at the end of the day, it's not about selling a product or a service. It's about trying to create a relationship with people first. And that those bonds and the time that you spend to strengthen those relationships are ultimately are going to be what makes you successful at the end of the day. It's all about the people, man, right? Okay, so what do you feel is one of your best resources that helps you lead in business or life? I think probably my greatest strength, and this is kind of weird, is probably my sense of humor. To me, if if you can't look at things from a very light perspective or you can't try to make things fun for the people that you're working with, then you're going to, you're going to be in a losing battle. That is an awesome resource. And that's a great way of looking at it. Most people would think tool, right? But no, you thought about something else, which is great. Sure. All right. So what would be one book that you would actually recommend to our listeners? Other than, other than my own, I'm not going to recommend them. There is an amazing book that came out in 2000, late 2013 called The Human Brand by Chris Malone and Susan T. Fisk. And this book really boils down leadership and branding into something that's very simple. The idea of warmth and competence. And that's how people judge other people but also judge brands. And it's a very simple way to understand where you are, both as a person or as a brand. 
We'll definitely make that available, a link to that on our show notes page, as well as some other bonus materials because Stan's going to have a best special offer for us. Stan, what do you have for the listeners? Great. Uh, Anyone that would like to go to, to my website, which is the number nine, not written out, the number nine inch marketing.com forward slash fast leaders, all one word, fast leaders. They'll be able to download, Jim, a executive summary of the purple goldfish as well as an executive summary of the green goldfish. So that's both books boiled down to the essence and um, great, great reads for folks. And these are great reads because they're, uh, they're really about little stories that have made a significant impact and goes to many of the things that Stan was actually talking about today. Um, they can contribute to all of us having better careers and lives if we just use those proven, really proven tools uh, and apply them in our own life. All right, so Stan, we'll make that also available as a link on our show notes page, which is for you going to be fastleader.net forward slash Stan Phelps, and it's with a PH. All right, so we've got one more question for you to wrap up the hoedown, Stan, and that is... Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning and you were 25 years old again. You are actually now responsible for a team that is underperforming and disengaged. You're a brand new leader. But you know what? You've actually retained all of the knowledge and wisdom and skill that you currently have. Now, your task is to turn the team around. So you get up, you get ready, and you head out for work. What do you do now? <laughs> what do you do? I don't know if there's any one thing that you do, Jim. But knowing what I know now, and I wish I knew when I was 25, is that those team members need to know that you care. You almost need to think about the people that are on your team as volunteers. And I love this as a mentality. You almost need to treat them, Jim, that there's nothing tying them to being part of your team, that they have to want to do it. And if you can show that you care about them, that you're there to support them, that's really going to create the environment where you have folks that are engaged. Most people don't realize that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so I think it my, my 25-year-old self would have jumped in there and went, all right, we need to do A, B, C, D. No, that's not the right thing. You sit down, you get to know your folks you show them that you're there to support them, that you truly care, you get their buy-in, you set a vision, and then anything is possible. That's right. Anything is possible when you focus on those people. Stan, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. The Fast Leader Legion honors you and thanks you for helping us get over the hump. Thank you for joining me on the Fast Leader Show today. For recaps, links from every show, special offers, and access to download and subscribe, if you haven't already, head on over to fastleader.net so we can help you move onward and upward faster. <laughs>